Good morning. Welcome to our video service this fine morning. I see where the phases of reopening are taking effect and at least now we can go into some stores, we can dine in some restaurants. I hope you're all keeping your social distancing in effect and wearing your mask when you need to and stay safe and then it won't be long. We will be back in our sanctuary rejoicing together. Let's begin. With God, all things are possible. These hopeful words in Matthew's gospel ring throughout today's readings. Sarah laughs at the absurd idea of bearing a child in her old age, while Abraham is reminded that nothing is too difficult. Romans remind us that we are saved by faith, not works, and God, therefore, gets the glory. Matthew tells us that humble disciples are given the power to cast out demons and cure illness. These myriad miracles of God offers us hope that passes all understanding. Let's begin our service and bow our heads in prayer. Holy One, who we, are, who we so often don't recognize, come into our midst and make, make your presence known. Renew our strength, refresh our in, imaginations, retool our weary efforts to carry, to carry your peace into the world. Amaze us with your power to make all things new and let us face your world with curiosity and hope. When our bodies are touched by your healing grace, may we bow before your, your throne of glory. Come to us now as we, as we gather together, but apart, to worship, that we might be touched by your spirit and made whole by your grace. In the name of the one who leads us on the way, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I picked two scripture readings for this Sunday. Neither one is real long, so bear with me. The first reading I have is Romans 5, verse 1 through 8. Therefore, since we have been made righteous through his faithfulness, combined with our faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have access by faith into this grace in which we stand through him. And we boast in the hope of God's glory. But not only that, we even take pride in our problems because we know that trouble produces endurance. Endurance produces character, and character produces hope. This hope doesn't put us to shame because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. While, while we were still weak, the, at the right moment, Christ died for ungodly people. It isn't often that Someone will die for a righteous person, though maybe someone might dare to die for a good person. But God shows his love for us because while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And our gospel reading this morning is from from the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 9, 35 through chapter, uh, verse 8 of chapter 10. Jesus traveled among all cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, announcing the good news of the kingdom, 
and healing every disease and every sickness. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were troubled and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the size of the harvest is bigger than you can imagine, but there are few workers. Therefore, plead with the Lord of the harvest to send out workers for his harvest. He called his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to throw them out and to heal every disease and every sickness. Here are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, son of Zebedee, John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanian, and Judas, who betrayed Jesus. Jesus sent these 12 out and commanded them, don't go among the Gentiles or into the Samaritan city. Go instead to the lost sheep, the people of Israel. As you go, make this announcement. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those with skin diseases, and throw out demons. You, re you receive without having to pay. Therefore, give without demanding payment. So ends this morning's gospel.
Okay, now we have time for prayers of the people. Roland Tomford still having a struggle with his back and things, so keep Carol and Roland in your prayers. And I I have to announce that we did lose a past member this past week. Bobby Getz passed away on Monday. She was quite an active lady in our church and in her church in Otter Tail. She was a close family friend to me. They, they were our neighbors in Wadena. They were our neighbors at the lake. So I, I've spent a lot of time in the Getz houses. She passed away in uh, Detroit Lakes and there's going to be a private service and I can't find out when that is. So keep Cindy and Don and Ginger and Patty, her four kids, in your prayers. And also with all the turmoil that's going on in the United States, well, actually all over the world now, but in I can't single out one person or one group to pray for because I think all groups have gone a little insane. So pray for, I think we could just pray for humanity to come to its senses and let Jesus put love in their hearts and see if we can put our country and this world back to where it should be. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Gracious God, hear us as we come to you in prayer. Hear us as we lift to you the needs of this congregation during these turbulent times in our, of our lives. Hear us as we, as we pray for our community in which we live and work and share neighbors. Hear us as we pray for our state and nation, our people who are in positions of leadership, elected and appointed, for those who serve in our military, our diplomatic corps, our relief and aid workers, and our missionaries as they encompass the earth in search of global peace. Hear us as we pray for your whole beloved world, for those of power and influence, for acts of justice and compassion, for those on the margins and the most vulnerable, for safekeeping and fresh possibilities. Hear us <coughs> as we as we bring before you names of our loved ones, our neighbors and friends, as they seek relief from their illness and stress. Grant them your healing powers and use your divine wisdom to, to send forth in the direction that you have laid out for them on their journey and ours to eternal life with you. As we sit in silence, Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
I don't know about you, but I have difficulty identifying with the image of Jesus as the great shepherd. This is not in no ways, it's not a negative thing by no means. I simply have no experience with sheep. I've been around cows a little, though. So today I'd rather talk to you about cow herding Christians instead of shepherding. Christians. I feel a little more, bit more comfortable with that terminology. Okay? My uh, grandfather, w Wilbur, my mom's dad, was a farmer, and for many years he had milk cows in Iowa. I can close my eyes and almost see him today heading out across the field in the old pickup truck, rounding up the cows. True, he didn't dress much like a cowboy, but he brought home the cows, nevertheless. Some, some of the cows would stray, and he would have to go round them up. Most of the cows, however, simply just walked on toward the barn when it came near milking time. They did what they were used to doing, and since seven, a day, seven days a week, they were milk twice a day, they got used to that routine. You used to see that happening around here all the time when there were so many dairy farms. I can also remember two dogs that my grandfather had at different stages of his life. The first, <laughs> the first dog was named Butch. The second was called Ring. Both dogs, both dogs could could round up cows. Butch was the best, though. I have a brother that we call Butch. Butch the dog was so good that he even knew which cows had gone dry and which still gave milk. My grandpa would send Butch out and say, go get him. Smart dog, huh? If, if I tried that with our Pomeranian at that time, I don't think much would happen except Queenie would go hide under the bed and probably growl at me. You see, Queenie was my mom's dog and not suited for cow herding. Maybe, therefore, it would be better for me if Jesus had said, go to the straying cows and bring them to the barn. Go get them. Now, you might, you might be thinking that this is this imagery is strange, but in some ways, in some ways, humans are much like cows. Some just wander around looking for greener grass, or they follow the same old trails they've always taken. We are one big mass of humanity now. Our moods and interests are very much influenced by television and advertising. Few of us often think original thoughts or do daring things. It's easier for us just to ramble on, never quite reaching the barn. But we need today are more cow herders Cow herders of good quality, of course. Have you ever been to New York City or Los Angeles or Chicago? I've mostly just seen pictures, well, Minneapolis, and heard about 
the congestion, besides all the cars, what you notice are thousands and thousands of people all frantically trying to get somewhere other than where they are. It's very well documented, isn't it? Jesus told his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, therefore pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. The first lesson taught by this scripture is that all good works should begin with prayer. Too often, too often people pray as a last resort. There is nothing left but to pray. We sometimes hear that said of the sick, or we hear people say things like, I tried everything. I guess it's time to pray. Our Lord, on the other hand, instructed his disciples to begin their activity with prayer. Pray to the Lord for laborers, he said. Why? Why go to prayer first? Because it reminds us right up front that the seed is the Lord's, the fields are the Lord's, and the harvest belongs to the Lord. The Lord felt so strongly about prayer that he taught his disciples the famous prayer that we all know, that we call the Lord's Prayer. I guess what I'm trying to say is it what is what most of us really want is to get safely home to the barn at evening feeding time and our lord has not only identified with us in his compassion but he has sent ministers teachers evangelists, choir directors, Sunday school teachers, musicians, and many others to minister to us, to feed us along our journey. His love is so immense for us. But who did the, who did the Lord choose as his first disciples? Did he choose saints, unlike ordinary men? No, no. He chose people very much like you and me. They were laymen, unlearned, plain, and yet believers with gifts he saw that, could, that he could use to further his kingdom. Notice, however, that he chose them. They were not simply volunteers. You see, we all have different uses to our Lord, and Jesus knows best how to use each of us. There was a pastor named Alexander McLaren who used to tell of a man who attended the church where he preached. This man was very intelligent, and so Dr. McLaren preached a whole series of sermons dealing with various intellectual difficulties concerning religion and life. To the doctor's delight, the man shortly afterwards came and said he had become a convinced Christian and he wanted to join the church. Overjoyed, Dr. McLaren asked, and which one of my sermons was it that rem removed your doubts? Your sermons, said the other man. It wasn't any of your sermons. The thing that set me thinking was that a poor woman came out of the church one Sunday and stumbled on the steps. 
when I put my hand out to help her, she, she smiled and said, thank you. And, and, and then she added, do you love Jesus Christ, my blessed Savior? He means everything to me. I thought about what she said. I still have some intellectual difficulties, but now he means everything to me, too. Jesus took rough, common, unlearned men with their stumbling faith. He took them with their brooding doubts and their grievous sins and made them his friends and co-workers. Jesus even gave Judas every chance he could to enter the kingdom. He said things in Judas's presence. A man's life does not consist in abundance of possessions. However, Judas chose 30 pieces of silver over eternal life with God. Tell me now, aren't some of us as dumb as cows? I wonder this morning how many of us are ambling down old familiar lanes that lead everywhere except to the barn. Where is your life been leading thus far? A Sunday school teacher was examining her pupils after a series of lessons on God's omnipotence. She asked, is there anything God can't do? There was silence. Finally, one lad held up his hand. The teacher, disappointed that the lesson's point had been missed, asked, well, just what is it that God can't do? Well, replied the boy, can't please everybody. Jesus ministered to the masses. However, he never pandered to them. We cannot water down our beliefs to be accepted by everyone, nor do we help anyone when we try to please all. Jesus Christ died in order to set us free from the power that sin held over us. You will not read in the Bible that he approved. You'll never read in the Bible that he approved of sin. But we find over and over and over that he does not approve of sin. But he loves sinners. If you and I are to be counted among the harvest, we need to pray for others, have compassion for the lost, zeal for the Lord's glory. Prayer reminds us what we are about. Compassion reminds us that others are like us. Zeal reminds us that Jesus Christ works miracles through small people. Jesus had compassion on the crowds, harassed and helpless. They were like sheep without a shepherd. And there were so many of them. So many. Just like today, the, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Where are the workers? Where are those who, who, who care enough to become involved in the lives of others? Where are those willing to take their time to show love to young people and to old folks, to substance abusers and vi victims of broken families, to the down and out as well as to the up and in? Where are the workers? Christ even asked us that today. Can we count on you? I remember 
praying one special day in this church a few years ago when I did not feel my sermons were helping anyone. I I looked up at the stained glass window to see a picture of Jesus there with a small lamb in his arm. And I heard clearly an inner voice saying, Feed my sheep. Well, I guess that settles it. I'd rather be a cow herder. But if Jesus wants me to be a shepherding preacher, a pastor of a small part of his flock, so be it. What does he want you to do? Why not pray and find out in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Amen. Okay. Just a friendly reminder. Next week is Father's Day. So we'll have some Father's Day readings. And just so everybody remembers, I'm just giving you a warning. It's Father's Day, so maybe you want to take care of dad next Sunday. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, I just got an email this morning from Pastor Amy of the Methodist denomination, and they have hired a new pastor who will beginning beginning with their congregation on July 5th. His name is Kevin Gregory, and he will be leading their church. He's going to have his hands full because he has, he's going to have Wadena, and he's also going to have Frazee. So when we see Pastor Gregory, make him feel warm and cuddly in our sanctuary when we get back to our sanctuary. I, I would assume we'll be meeting the people, our group will be meeting in the next week or so and making a decision on when we're going to come back into our sanctuary. Hopefully it'll be soon. Um, a lot of the churches are opening up and I my vote is to open up. So, But I'm sure I'll be letting you know Let's see, today's a point. I got two weeks to let you know where, where we're at in the togetherness of our worship service. With that said, go forth from this time together with hearts open to the surprising, inexhaustible love of God. Greet friends and strangers with the gifts of Christ, mercy and justice and joy. Expect the Spirit to meet us wherever we are, in struggle, in grief, and in peace. Go now in hope and be ready for unexpected miracles. Go now in love, for the one who loves us goes with us. Till next week. Mm -hmm.